Hi, I'm Andrew Strom, author of the book Kundalini Warning, Are False Spirits Invading the Church? Now, of course, that's a very radical title, and uh, we're going to be looking at a, a huge amount of video footage in this documentary, and I want to show you some of the shocking things and, and just how similar they are to the Kundalini cults of Hinduism and the New Age movement, Eastern religions. Um, the stuff that's been invading in the last, say, 16 to 17 years, I believe it's the worst invasion in church history. So we've got a lot to look at. And my background is I've been involved in the charismatic movement myself for over 25 years. I've been part of the prophetic movement. I was part of that movement for 11 years. So I saw all of this incredibly alarming and disturbing stuff coming in uh, while I was involved. I first heard about this man, Rodney Howard Brown, in about 1993-94. He was holding huge meetings in the United States, very popular, and was starting to have a huge influence with his drunkenness. He called himself the Holy Ghost Bartender, and he would lay hands on people, imparting to them this laughter, or he would wave his hands at people, and this laughter would overcome them, or shaking, or uncontrollable jerking. Uh, all these manifestations were starting to happen. And uh, he became huge in the word of faith because he's a huge prosperity preacher. So he uh, got himself on Kenneth Copeland's uh, television program and you can see them behaving drunkenly on stage, live on television. Here's Rodney Howard Brown imparting uh, the spirit of drunkenness and laughter into uh, some of the biggest leaders in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the biggest word of faith, prosperity teachers. A guy called Randy Clark came down, saw what was happening, got this impartation through the laying on of hands, got this anointing himself, and he took it into the vineyard movement. Now here is Todd Bentley explaining uh, how Randy Clark brought this in. He received a spark of the anointing in Tulsa and in Lakeland came down. And just weeks later, God used him as the fire starter for the Toronto outpouring and the Toronto blessing in January 1994. And we have here tonight Randy Clark. And I asked him to come out, dear Randy. Because I know you're a fire starter, and you've been lighting fires all over the world. So it entered into the Toronto Airport Vineyard Church, and so it became known as the Toronto Blessing. Went worldwide under that name, the Toronto Blessing. Everybody knew what that was about. People falling down, acting drunken, laughing hysterically, shaking uncontrollably, or uh, jerking backwards and forwards, their, their head shaking back and forth, people even roaring like lions, people making animal noises. Um, you know, this stuff had not been seen in the church. I mean, it may be in a tiny way on the fringes. This stuff had never been seen in the church on this scale before, and it invaded worldwide. So all around the world, especially in the Commonwealth countries, we're talking England and all through the UK, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Canada, and many other nations all over the world, all through Europe, all of the charismatic movement was into this stuff uh, for the large part. And so this thing became a worldwide sensation just in a couple of years. Now the basic question that we're asking in this documentary is why are these manifestations so similar to Eastern religions and Hinduism and the Kundalini cults and yet they're not found in scripture, they're not found in the Bible, they're not found in classical Christianity at all. <laughs> Of course, in Hinduism, one of the most common ways of experiencing a kundalini awakening is through a guru placing his hand upon your forehead. This is called Shaktipat. 
And when they do that, you'll be infused with this incredible love and this wave of emotion. You'll fall down. There'll be all these manifestations, maybe animal noises, uh, joy and weeping and shaking. This is a Kundalini awakening and amazingly, it is exactly the same as what we have been seeing in the Toronto Blessing. Now this all began with Rodney Howard Brown imparting a new anointing into a bunch of leaders and they spread it around the world. In fact, it spread like wildfire. How do we know that Rodney Howard Brown had a pure anointing? How do we know it wasn't a Kundalini spirit from the beginning? Because it seems absolutely identical to it. Now one of the very clearest signs of a Kundalini awakening has always been these Kriyas. You see this woman involved in the New Age movement, she's walking along exhibiting these Kriyas happening, involuntary uh, jerking motions. And the staggering thing about it is that we are seeing again and again and again these exact same type of Kriyas right through the Toronto movement. This has always been one of the clearest signs of Kundalini that we know of. A friend of mine from South Africa who's done a tremendous amount of research on this topic says that Kundalini is like a false Holy Spirit. It produces even miracles and healings and fusions of love and power and energy and emotion and uh, all these kinds of things and yet it's the Hindu version of the Holy Spirit and it's not holy. Now we all know that in the last days the Bible speaks again and again warning of deception, seducing spirits. It says that it will be perilous times will come. It says there will be lying signs and wonders. It says all of these things, soberness, sobriety, uh, being alert, being watchful. This is what it says to us all the way through the prophecies of the last days. Here we are, we're in the end times now. And what do we have on our hands? We have a movement that's promoting weird and bizarre signs and wonders. We have a movement promoting drunkenness when we're told to be sober in the last days again and again. It's promoting all kinds of whacked out spiritual experiences. And we are warned in the last days, watch out for seducing spirits. The Bible even says, it goes as far as saying this, if possible, the very elect themselves would be deceived. So I don't want to be taking any chances with deceiving spirits in the last days. If it's weird, if it looks like Hinduism, if it looks like it's from some Eastern religion, I don't want any part of it. The charismatic movement should have shut it out and said, no, we're not having this. This is exactly what is warned about in Scripture. As we've already seen in the 1990s, this bizarre new movement with drunkenness and animal noises falling down, jerking, and all of this spread around the world. They think Toronto something. Wait till they come to Boston. And of course, Charisma Magazine, one of the most popular Christian magazines, was right behind it. In the USA, another revival took off in Brownsville, Pensacola, which at least had real repentance preaching, but it also had a lot of this truly bizarre stuff as well. It aches and me grieves for your spirit. He grieves for you. <laughs> And then in 2008 came the biggest one of all, Todd Bentley and the Lakeland Revival. This outpouring kicked off when Todd Bentley, a 32-year-old Canadian with a long-time healing ministry, came to do just five nights of meetings in one Lakeland church. Bam! We're in 214 nations a night, potential audience 400 million. And, and 10 hours a day, we're, we're literally around the world. People are seeing what's happening here in Florida. 
That's because God TV made the unprecedented and extremely expensive decision to preempt all their primetime programming and broadcast the Lakeland meetings every night. Now there's no question that this was one of the biggest, most publicized movements that the Christian world has ever seen. We had 550,000 different computers have logged into the webcast. That's incredible. But of course the Lakeland movement was also loaded with the same bizarre manifestations as we've seen elsewhere. A little bit of that glory's coming on me. And we're, we have an international television audience tonight. <laughs> and I got that vibrating again. Lord, let everybody vibrate. So what were some of Todd Bentley's biggest influences? Well, he tells us himself. But one outpouring that's most precious to me because it brought intimacy in the presence of God to the church. It brought refreshing and renewal to the church was what took place in Toronto, Canada. So it's no surprise that Todd Bentley invited the founder of the Toronto Blessing, Randy Clark, to minister at this new revival. I see some of you already the power of God. It's like 110. God, make it 220. Now thousands and thousands of leaders and Christians were coming to Lakeland from all over the world to get an impartation of the Spirit. And our focus here in Florida every night is I lay hands on every single person that comes, whether it's 5,000, 10,000, and I'm praying, God, give it away, give it away, give it away. That's the focus here, impartation. Some are saying this is the most contagious anointing the world has ever seen. Just look at what people are receiving here and taking back to their own city and their own church. Here's what happened in Dudley, England, when the Lakeland anointing arrived there. <laughs> and this was repeated all around the world in hundreds and hundreds of churches wherever this anointing went. Even Charisma magazine began to question some of what was going on. But that didn't stop the very biggest leaders in the charismatic movement from endorsing and promoting this movement. On June 23, 2008, they held a special commissioning ceremony for Todd Bentley live at Lakeland with the very biggest apostles and prophets of the charismatic movement. This is Peter Wagner, the head apostle of the entire charismatic movement worldwide. And here's Rick Joyner, the top prophet of the movement. This commissioning represents a powerful spiritual transaction taking place in the invisible world. With this in mind, I take the apostolic authority that God has given me and I decree to Todd Bentley, your power will increase, your authority will increase, your favor will increase. Your influence will increase. Your revelation will increase. Of course, only weeks later, Todd Bentley's movement completely fell apart. And no amount of Stacey Campbell shaking her head was going to change that fact. And receiving the tablets came after Numbers 24. Just a few weeks later, on July the 9th, ABC Nightline had a special on Todd Bentley and the Lakeland Revival. Little did we know this would be the beginning of the end of the revival. Can you supply us with three people who have been cured through miracle with their medical diagnosis, their names? But we never got three. Instead, we were given a binder filled with what Bentley says are stories of inspiring miracles. It offered incomplete contact information, a few pages of incomplete medical records, doctors' names were crossed out. And so, not a single miracle claim of Bentley's could be verified. 
But then came even more shocking news. Todd Bentley was separating from his wife. He'd apparently been having an affair with a female staff member even while the revival was going. And of course, at this point, the entire revival collapsed. Lee Grady, the editor of Charisma magazine, spoke for multitudes around the world when he wrote these words. Todd Bentley's announcement that his marriage is ending has thrown our movement into a tailspin and questions need to be answered. It was not supposed to end like this. But sadly, that was not the end. Todd Bentley divorced his wife, married his girlfriend, and the biggest prophetic ministry in the world, run by Rick Joyner, undertook a speedy restoration process to fast-track Todd Bentley back on stage again. And now here he is, back again, ministering alongside his new wife. And the thing about the elephant, it wasn't just an ordinary elephant, it was a wild elephant, a wild elephant. As we've already seen, these same spasmodic head movements in Hinduism are taken as a sure sign of a Kundalini awakening. Why then are we now seeing them in the church? It is for everyone, for every Christian. For and so, aided and abetted by some of the biggest names in Christendom, Todd Bentley and others continue to spread this anointing right through the charismatic church. Jesus, I pray some of you would feel like you're getting electrocuted. But this is not just about Todd Bentley and his friends. This is about thousands of charismatic leaders all over the world who made the decision not just to bring this stuff in and endorse it, but to actually transfer it onto their own people. And I don't care if, if it was peer pressure, uh, just because every other minister seemed to be getting into it. I don't care what the reasons were. This is one of the worst, most disturbing movements that maybe the church has ever seen. And these guys brought it in deliberately into the church. And when the very top apostles and prophets in the entire charismatic movement can get up on a stage and endorse and promote and prophesy the grandest things over such a suspect movement that was obviously suspect right from the start, we've got to know our top leadership, they don't have any discernment. Your power will increase. Your authority will increase. Your favor will increase. We need a revolution in the leadership of the church. As I was saying earlier, I'm a charismatic, Pentecostal, tongue-speaking believer myself. So I'm not against any of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I want to see uh, more and more people filled with the Spirit of God, full of the love and the holiness of God. But as we've seen, a new generation of leaders has arisen, and it doesn't seem like holiness that they're spreading. I want to read from... from Luke chapter 1. This is John Crowder, probably the worst that I've ever seen. And yet his influence is growing enormously, especially amongst the youth. Lord, I love your heavy, drunken glory. I firmly believe in token the ghost, right? I have a little Jehovah Wana. And so we just, all you have to, and the thing is, it's free. You just reach in your pocket. Wow, look at what's there. You just take a little... A little, a little whiff of the glory. A basic question here. At what point does something go from being only tantamount to blasphemy and become real, actual blasphemy? This is the stuff that John Crowder and his friends have been spreading all over the earth. Welcome to Slosh Fest, which they hold every year, attracting hundreds and hundreds of people. And of course, if anybody questions what they're doing, they're immediately accused of being a religious Pharisee. So apparently we're not even allowed to use our discernment, even though the Bible commands us to do so. Here's the well-known author and speaker, Jim Goal, taking part in the drunken glory with Crowder and his accomplice, Ben Dunn. And here's Ben Dunn ministering this drunkenness anointing to the young people at Bill Johnson's famous Bethel Church in Redding, California. In fact, a lot of this movement now is targeting young people. 
Now, Bill Johnson is a very famous charismatic leader, author of the book, When Heaven Invades Earth. But what people don't realize is that Bill's church in Reading is one of the major centers for this drunkenness anointing in North America. They specialize in what they call the fire tunnel, where they impart this anointing to all the young people. Can you imagine walking into a room that sounds like this? We worship you. We worship you. And of course, Bill Johnson and Cheyenne and John and Carol Arnott from Toronto openly endorsed and promoted Todd Bentley and the Lakeland Revival. And we stand with you. Another major center where they're imparting this drunkenness anointing to the young people is IHOP, the International House of Prayer in Kansas City. We've already drunk in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Here's the IHOP founder, Mike Bickle, welcoming Bill Johnson and the main Toronto Blessing leaders to partner with IHOP. The three rivers, Kansas City, Reading and Toronto must come together. Wow! Who said it again? Wow! Say it again! Say it again! Now, this drunkenness thing, where did that come from? Why are they behaving drunk and saying, oh, this is the Holy Spirit? They say, oh, it's just like the book of Acts in Acts chapter 2. And I say, no, it's not like the book of Acts in Acts chapter 2. It doesn't say they were reeling around. It says that they were speaking in other tongues and other people heard it and they said, oh, maybe these people are drunk. It wasn't because they're reeling around and behaving literally like drunk people. In fact, the Bible warns us again and again in the last days, be sober, be vigilant, don't be drunk. So why is the charismatic movement giving itself over to manifestations that seem the opposite of sobriety and the opposite of holiness? In fact, they look more like outright paganism. This is Rick Joyner's Morningstar Church, and of course, this is the other major center of this anointing in North America. Can anybody please tell me the difference between this and outright paganism? As we can see, a lot of this stuff has a real New Age feel to it. In fact, when you go to John Crowder's website, he openly advertises his mystical schools, where people can learn to operate in trances, raptures, ecstatic prayer, mysticism, spirit travel, and every other New Age sounding thing you can imagine. And yet Christian leaders all over the world are promoting these ministries. People are being deceived into believing in guided visualization, astral travel, centering prayer, stigmata, and all kinds of New Age practices. Of course, they call them different names, like contemplative prayer and spirit travel, to hide the fact of how totally New Age they are. This is Lucy Rail, who now has a home in the charismatic movement simply because of these bizarre signs and wonders. And this is Joshua Mills, who specializes in glittering dust appearing, as well as out of body spirit travel and other things. All over my body, people will travel hundreds of miles to see this stuff. And then there are the angels. Even though the Bible specifically warns us about angels of light, now everywhere we look, we see the weirdest and most bizarre accounts of so-called angels appearing. But why do they not carry the holy fear of the Lord like the angels in the Bible? This is Sid Roth's TV show, which apart from God TV is one of the biggest promoters of all these strange experiences in the church. My guest, Joshua Mills, is a legitimate sign and wonder. And this is Patricia King of Extreme Prophetic. 
interviewing the oh, famous no. prophet Bob Jones as well as Todd Bentley. You gave me a phone call and you said, hey, I've just been soaking with Bob Jones and I've gone up into the third heaven and all that. And, and it was all new to me. I'd never even heard that kind of language before and I was so hungry yeah. for it. I hope you can see that all these different ministries and streams are really one big movement. United by this strange anointing that they started spreading everywhere in the 1990s. And still they spread it today. And so we're left with an enormous worldwide movement in the church that is absolutely loaded with spiritual forces and practices and experiences that seem to come straight out of Eastern mysticism. And they're busy telling us not to discern, but to turn off our mind. Not only that, but it seems very clear that it's targeting the youth. Is this movement dangerous? Clearly we have to say yes, and hopefully through this documentary you can see why. But there's just one thing I want to talk about before we bring this program to a close. You know, a lot of people when they see this stuff, they go right over to the other extreme. They don't want any miracles. They don't want any prophecies whatsoever. They want nothing to do with a supernatural God. But we see from the New Testament again and again, God does do miracles. They are holy miracles. God does do supernatural things, but they have a holy character about them. Even angels do visit people from time to time. They are holy angels. And this is the distinction we've got to make. And we can't afford to be losing the New Testament. We can't afford to be doing away with healings and miracles. We've got to have these things. We've got to have them in balance. We should have them in abundance. We've got to be a New Testament people.